everybody, welcome back to Leosophy. Um, this is going to be covering a lot more orders in a, hopefully a smaller period of time. Um, I thought today I would cover the flying adults swimming larvae uh, series of families and orders. Um, and, and even actually, a uh, uh, was it a super family or a super order? Oh, actually it's just an order. I'm surprised. I think they moved it since I studied it then. I had to double check. Um, I, t I said I was going to cover uh, Odonata, which I actually pronounce Odonata. I've heard both, but I've heard Odon Odonata more often lately. So, but anyway, uh, that's the family of dragonflies and damselflies. And the only real difference between the two is if you look at a dragonfly, it's a much broader, bigger creature. It's what we associate when we actually think of, of, the, of that particular order. And then damselflies are just more slender looking. And in the larvae, also very similar. They uh, they are scary looking. They they kind of look like they were probably one of the H.R. Geiger inspirations for the uh, alien from the Ridley Scott movies. They swim around using their anus. Uh, they, they propel water through it. They also use that to propel water into their, their gills and breathe. Uh, many of them have hemolymph so that's why you know if you're driving your car and you actually see red in the smear and it's, it's kind of scary and jarring when that happens it's because you know sometimes they live in, in such low air um, environments in, the, in that case stagnant water that they need uh, hemoglobin in order to I said hemolymph didn't I that's, that's insect blood hemoglobin the, the stuff that makes our blood red sometimes they need that in order to survive those environments and so they evolved that trait but the scariest thing about uh, dragonfly and damselfly larvae is where I was going with the alien thing. They have a jaw that just goes all the way out, stretches out. It's highly recommend you look it up. It is mortifying looking. I still think they're amazing animals. I love dragonflies, but holy crap, the babies are freaky. They eat fish, they eat other insects that are not averse to cannibalism. Voracious carnivores uh, in the larval stage, obligate predators. Well, then they become adults and they grow wings and they become terrestrial. They're not in the water anymore. Well, that doesn't change their behavior. They're actually like little fighter pilots. They have a wonderful adaptation where the middle legs are a little longer. So it makes this interesting basket shape. And they chase down uh, insects while they're flying and they, they grab them. And hence the, uh, the basket shape. It holds them tight so then they can eat them literally while they're flying. Um, that's, this is also why you notice this time of year people get annoyed by dragonflies. They'll be in parking lots, uh, in front of shop windows. Well, it's hot. A lot of the little watering holes have dried up. And a window or hot metal, the way they shimmer, they look a lot like a source of water. You know, they're reflective. And so they're, they're trying to find water to lay their eggs. Um, yeah, that, that's all I'm going to cover for dragonflies right now simply because we've got other... Um, semi-aquatic ones. Uh, one of the most interesting to me, because I said in a previous uh, video that there's only three stages of development for uh, insects. Uh, after egg, I don't really consider that a stage. Larvae, pupae, imago, or adult. And the adult has wings. Well, this one kind of is the strange exception that proves the rule. Ephemeroptera, mayflies. They actually have four stages, and the the third stage is like super brief, so that's why. It's, it's just this weird transitory stage, but I'll, I'll get into it. So mayflies are semi-aquatic. Well, they're, they're full-blown aquatic when they're larvae. They, they live in the water, and that's where they spend most of their lives, in the water. Kind of like how cicadas spend most of their lives as larvae under roots. Mayflies are underwater. Then, now, and it's very choreographed, all at once. This is where you get the expression, lives the life of a mayfly, just lives for today. Ephemeroptera means, it's one of my favorite words, ephemeral, I love that word, it means for a day, wings for a day, <clears throat> brief, fleeting. They all crawl out on grass, they molt into what's called a subimago. These have wings, but it's not a fully formed adult. There are, there are things that are lacking. Uh, and then they molt again, almost immediately after they molt the first time, into full-fledged adults. And then they fly up in the air, they have something equivalent to an orgy. They, the females lay their eggs, and then they die. It's a very brief process. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of times where nature, the more bizarre components inspire fiction. That's where a lot of, a lot of animals do that. Salmon do that. Uh, cuttlefish do that. Squid do that. 
like there's this really brief breeding and dying uh, what I almost said rituals behaviors um, this is what inspires a lot of uh, uh, fictional stories about sort of adults not living long like Logan's Run and uh, uh, probably more notably uh, Dr. Zoidberg on Futurama the the mating uh, episode so yeah mayflies beautiful animal unique animal um, and there's something just almost uh, romantic about their life cycle that it's it's just so very short um, yeah anyway let's see caddisflies uh, trichoptera which means hair wing um, very interesting looking little creatures the reason why they're famous is you can actually find jewelry from them uh, caddisflies they are aquatic as larvae as every other member of this episode is and what's interesting is they they produce a glue an incredible waterproof glue that was actually reverse engineered to make the waterproof glues that we use so what they do is they just grab pebbles and stones as larvae whenever they need to pupate and they make their own little cocoon out of stones um, using that glue well artists and jewelers have taken advantage of this because you know if you take one of those larvae and you put it in a water source and you give it like gold flakes and emeralds and stuff they'll just make a beautiful little uh, oval cocoon of that and once they become adults of course as I've mentioned all adult uh, insects are the winged stages they have wings uh, they're a very unassuming looking little creature they're uh, they actually kind of remind me I'll, I'll cover them later because uh, they do not qualify for this episode they kind of remind me of like how you know how moths are sometimes sort of seen as the more drab even though they're often very beautiful they're seen as the more drab equivalent of butterflies caddisflies kind of remind me of like the ugly stepsister of uh, of Neuroptera of uh, oh my god why can't I think of it what antlines grow up to be um, lace wings I don't know why I couldn't think of that I actually didn't look it up I was trying to look it up and then I remembered it before I did okay lace wings so that that's really all you need to know about stoneflies it means hair wing um, uh, yeah let's see da, 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 da. what else did, what have I not covered yet caddisflies oh stoneflies stoneflies are interesting because they're one of those creatures that very few people see the adults or are remotely interested in the adults they have big overlapping wings um, they kind of look like if a a roach or a cricket had really really long wings they're a very generic looking insect um, and I don't mean that in a, in a mean way but what's interesting is as, a, as larvae they are aquatic and you know they like, like like all the others that I mentioned they crawl out onto a uh, pond or lake foliage and then they they molt and then now they have wings um, what's interesting about the larvae is they kind of sort of in a roundabout way look like crickets that live in the water they're, they're very peculiar you've got a very cricket like head but with much simpler eyes larvae tend to have much 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 simpler eyes than adults and then you have three not one peculiar looking uh, segments which are the thorax now that may sound uh, uh, like a misnomer of well insects don't have but well larvae are, are not divided into three segments anyway and really the last two are really more like semi abdomen segments but it's interesting because if you were to see this animal you might conclude that you're looking at something that flies in the face of insect physiology because it actually I mean it's aquatic but it looks like an adult animal with the exception that it doesn't have wings it, it looks more like a cricket than what should be a larval insect and that's what makes stone flies uh, kind of peculiar um, uh, yeah just uh, oh, and, uh, in case I didn't mention it's Plecoptera is the name um, let's see last one I'm gonna cover is the order Mega Megaloptera which is the one that used to be when I studied it it was a super order um, this would uh, include uh, oh that's why see back when I studied it it actually included uh, lace wings and snake flies interesting uh, you know, I actually still considered snake flies to be okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to get into it. Okay, Megaloptera 
when I, what I was going to cover would be snake flies, owl flies, and uh, Dobson flies, but in this case it's just owl flies and Dobson flies. Interesting. Well, these animals are what you would associate with the uh, bait shop term Helgramites. Big, scary looking, wiggling, multi legged larvae that are obligate carnivores, as you can tell by their teeth. They have uh, massive, massive hook like mandibles that can draw blood from a human being. So, really freaky looking. People use them to catch bass, uh, where they're called Helgramites. Well, when they molt and become adults, and one of the reasons I kind of wanted to cover this one was is I get a lot of uh, what is this pictures this time of year because this is when they're, they're out and about. This time of year, early morning hours, late uh, evening hours, the adults, very short-lived, are showing up. They have four massive wings, two enormous club-like antennae, and of course, um, gigantic, gigantic looking um, mandibles. Huge, huge mandibles. The males look more like, uh, they're not as smooth and round, they're kind of jagged and they look in some ways more intimidating and the females are more hook-like. Um, here's the funny thing though, the females can bite and draw blood, but it, they're such a slow animal that you're pretty much not going to have that problem. And the males, their mandibles are actually just gone in terms of muscle. They're, they're big and scary, but they're actually used to hold on to the female during mating, so they can't hurt you. So people see these and they freak out because they look like prehistoric monsters, which kind of they are. but. Uh, they're not. They don't feed when they're adults. They're just interested in mating. It's a very short thing. Like most of the uh, the dragonflies and damselflies are kind of the exception of the rule on that one. Uh, most of these animals, where they have an aquatic um, larval cycle and an adult imago cycle, the adult cycle tends to be pretty brief. We're talking like a day, like in the case of mayflies, really less than a day, to like a week in some instances for for Dobson flies, so they're not just around a lot, and they're not going to hurt anyone. Um, they're a really interesting animal, and they're kind of one of those ones where people who do collect insects, I incidentally don't, but people who do, uh, they're very coveted because they're very noticeable. Like, nobody's ever going to walk by an insect collection that's got them in it and not do a double take because they're just freaky. So yeah, that covers all of the uh, semi-aquatic uh, orders that I found of interest and uh, that's it. Like, share, subscribe, keep asking questions. Bye.